Don't you ever not suppose someone else You're stuck in my head And I can get you out of it If I could do it all again I know I'd go back to you Hey, all right, all right, all right, check it, check it. Let me get clothes and get suitable for YouTube so they can put advertisers in my video and I can make some money and I could feed my children. So it's Thursday right now, August 23rd, if you're watching this, which means I will be in New York City tomorrow with nine of my subscribers and we are doing a live draft weekend in New York City. It's gonna be dope. You wanna follow along, make sure you are following me on Instagram, BDGE underscore fantasy football or my personal Instagram. <sighs> Stop smoking at me. Or my personal Instagram, nickercolano.bdge, all linked below. I've been so stressed out about this weekend, but I'm really excited for it to be here. I will be live streaming some of it. I will be posting a bunch of Instagram stories throughout the weekend. Still will be putting out videos while I'm there. I'll have them queued up. But today is going to be my favorite spot to draft from in 2018 fantasy football drafts. I get this question all the time. It's usually one of you kids out there and you're like, hey, I just out butt chug the rest of my league mates and now I get to choose where I draft from. I got your back, man. I know I, I know exactly where you need to be drafting from. And that's what we're going to discuss here today. Now, I'm someone who's probably done more best ball and mock drafts than 99.9% .9 of the U.S. population at this point. It's totally not me bragging. If anything, that's like kind of embarrassing, to be honest with you. But nonetheless, this is what I'm here for. I'm here to help you in this sense. Now, to put it simply, right, I'm going to back it up with the big facts, as I always do. A ton of facts, statistics, analysis, numbers, all the, the goods. If you're just here for the first seven seconds and want to know, it's spots one to four. Anywhere in the one to four range is where I want to land. The reason being is because I want one of the top four running backs. There is one tier of running backs at the top of this year's draft class, which consists of in no particular order because everyone's going to be different, but I'm pretty sure every single person has the top four guys the same. It's Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, and David Janstein. Not here to argue which of the four you want. That would depend on league scoring settings. So one through four. And this is the best position to draft. I'm right. And if your opinion is different than that, I respect it, but you're wrong. The takeaway here is that having an elite top tier workhorse running back, one of these four guys, which all of them are for their respective teams, gives you a tremendous advantage in fantasy football. Every year, it's been statistically proven that having a workhorse running back is the biggest single advantage that you could have on your fantasy football team. If you owned Todd Gurley last year, you won your league. Well, as long as you made the playoffs owning Todd Gurley, you won your league because he went nuts. And it would be hard for you not to make the playoffs if you own Todd Gurley, considering the season he had. But I want to dive a little bit deeper, right? My good friend, someone who I've never conversed with or seen or talked to in person, so I'm just going to say my good friend for whatever reason, Scott Barrett over at Pro Football Focus. I believe his Twitter is at Scott Barrett DFB, so I would definitely go follow him. Uh, he did the heavy lifting for me. I want you to read this paragraph. Over the past 15 seasons, the 10 highest flex eligible seasons in fantasy points per game were from running backs. So flex eligible means running back, wide receiver, tight end. The 10 highest seasons were from running backs. 14 of the top 15, 93% were running backs. 24 of the top 30, 35 of the top 50 were running backs. Two seasons ago, Le'Veon Bell outscored the closest wide receiver, Antonio Brown, his teammate, ironically, by 5.6 fantasy points per game. Last season, Todd Gurley outscored Brown again, the top closest wide receiver, by 3.7 fantasy points per game. During the fantasy postseason, which I was just kind of referencing, Gurley outscored the closest non-running back by a whopping 52.7 total fantasy points. So Gurley won you your league, like I said, if you had him. Um, and while running backs carry more injury risk, but only barely so, a uh, study that he did, it's not really as much of an outlier as people assume it to be, like running backs being less healthy or missing more games per season. It's a very small margin he found to be. Uh, top tier running backs have a much higher ceiling and are typically the players that carry you to a championship victory. Now, look at this chart. We are looking at ADP data since 2009. The first running back selected outscored the first wide receiver drafted. The second running back selected outscored the second wide receiver drafted and so on and so forth up until the 22nd player at each position. So it appears Running backs are actually a safer investment than wide receivers early on, and ADP is pretty good at predicting fantasy success at the position. If you look at this chart, 
this is just fantasy points per game. So, of course, you're going to see quarterbacks have the highest because they are just a net. That's, you know, in a vacuum, they always score more fantasy points than other positions because of the high touchdown rate that they have on a game-to-game -game basis. But when you look at the running backs, it doesn't coincide with the wide receivers until you hit wide receiver 22. Of course, there will always be times when wide receivers score more points. So there will be maybe the wide receiver five is higher than the wide receiver five, uh, running back five that year. But on average, if you're giving yourself the best probability to win, you should be drafting running backs over wide receivers early. And that is the reason why I want a workhorse running back in the first round. However, you can't just look at it one versus one data point, right? You can't just be like a running back one scores more than wide receiver one. And that's the reason you want to pick the running back. So I did a little heavy lifting myself. I didn't want to leave it all to Scott Barrett. And the reason that people come up with like the late round quarterback theory or the reason that people want running backs over wide receivers, you have to look at the relative gap between running backs themselves and then the relative gap between wide receivers. So basically, instead of looking at running backs score more points than wide receivers in a vacuum, right? That's the wrong way to look at it. The way to look at it is does the running back one or the running back three score far more points than the running back 10? compared to the wide receiver one or the wide receiver three scoring more points than the wide receiver 10. If wide receiver three only outscores wide receiver 10 by like two fantasy points per game, and the running back three outscores the running back 10 by like seven fantasy points per game, that means you want one of those top tier running backs because they are so much more valuable than not the wide receiver, but they're so much more valuable than the other players at their position. And that's what I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at the gap between top tier running backs and mid tier running backs, and then top tier wide receivers and lower tier wide receivers. And that's how you should be uh, valuing players. And it's the main reason why like this, this year, I'm pretty sure my only tight end strategy is very similar to J.J. Zachariasen, who ironically like kind of created the late round quarterback, but he's like, draft Gronk or wait on tight ends until the end. That's kind of my strategy, right? If I'm not getting Gronk, I'm waiting until the 8th, ninth, 10th round to draft the tight end for the most part. I think Gronk is a whole tier ahead of even Travis Kelsey and especially Zach Ertz, which people think that's a, an unpopular opinion, but that is my belief. I think Gronk is head over heels way, 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 way more elite than either of those guys. Anyways, here is what we are looking at. So I made the chart, as I said, I went back over the last three years, I looked at fantasy points per game for the RB1, for the RB3, the RB10, RB15. Same thing with the wide receiver one, wide receiver three, wide receiver 10, wide receiver 15. I just took the averages of the last three years. So basically this chart is saying over the last three years, the RB1 has finished with 22 fantasy points per game and half PPR. Excuse me while I go tell a telemarketer to eat my ass. Okay, we bike. So we did that for one, three, 10, and, five, and 15 to get a good look at, at a bunch of different finishes. So there's no outliers or anything like that. What we find is that the bigger positional advantage in terms of top tier guys is clearly by far and away the running back. The difference between the RB1 and the RB15 is nearly 10 fantasy points per game. For wide receivers, it's only 5.8. So the wide receiver one on average over the last three years averages 5.8 fantasy points more per game than the wide receiver 15. The running back one averages almost 10 points more per game than the running back 15. That's even less than from wide receiver one to wide receiver 15, it's less than running back three to running back 15 and the RB1 to RB10. From RB1 to RB10, it's still eight fantasy points per game difference. So while you draft running back 10, right? If, if, if you go with wide receivers early and you're happy about getting wide, uh, running back 10, whether it's Dalvin Cook or Kareem Hunt, on average, you're still getting eight fantasy points per game less than the RB1 and four and a half, almost five points per game less than the RB3. So that is crazy. Uh, once you hit around wide receiver 20-ish, like Scott Barrett mentioned, wide receivers start to take the advantage, um, but that's why you want early round top tier running backs in fantasy football. And that's the reason why I will take guys like Leonard Fournette or Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley over Antonio Brown this year. Now it's hard to skip on a guy like Brown in the first round, but the numbers back it up and having a top tier running back is such a positional advantage uh, over, your, over your league mates. So if I had to take a specific spot I would probably choose number four, just because you're guaranteed one of those four guys. I like all four of the guys. And then obviously you have the earliest pick in the second round of the top four picks. I'm putting you at four also puts you far away from the wraparound picks. So you don't put yourself at a uh, disadvantage if there's a positional run. And by positional run, I mean, if you're at like the one or two pick, right? Your picks from your 
that that wraparound pick till your next round pick is like 20 picks or it could be 25 depending on your league size there's a good chance that like quarterback runs go on or tight end runs go on and you're left with you know maybe when you made that pick tight end six was on the board and by the time it gets back to you it's like tight end 12 or 13 and you kind of put yourself in a tough spot so the closer to the middle you get the easier it is to to avoid those positional runs and that's what number four does it gets you one the one of the top four running backs two it gets you the earliest pick in the second round of those top four running backs and then it also takes you away from the positional runs in in the middle of the draft if i had to pick one spot that i don't like it's definitely the number five spot because like i said i you'll, you're gonna feel guilted into taking antonio brown with the number five pick but i would gladly not go with antonio brown if i had the number five pick this year just because like all the drafts i've done when i go with a wide receiver earlier if i take a wide receiver in the first round i hate how my team ends up and i hate the running backs that i have on my roster because i will be happy getting a fournette a barkley a kamara a melvin gordon as my running back one that's why if i don't get a one through four then i'm looking at i, I like like the eight through ten pick if it's in a 12 team league if it's in a 10 team league then probably like the seven or eight pick is good for me because you will get one of those uh, top running backs and maybe even two of them depending on how your draft goes but if you miss on them then you still get like an elite wide receiver i've seen OBJ, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen. I'd be perfectly happy with any of those guys as my second round picks. I base a lot of where I want to draft on the first and second round picks because I think those are the guys that are going to carry your team, of course. So once you get later into the drafts, ADPs start to spread themselves out and you'll see guys picking guys in the seventh round where their ADP is the ninth round and so on and so forth. But in earlier in the drafts, right, their ADP differences are only like one or two or three spots away. Or that's where you need to nail your picks. So I think having one of the first four picks is going to be crucial um, to kind of building the foundation of your team. So that being said, I don't want the first or last pick because it uh, helps you avoid the positional run. You have to reach really far up. There's no value-based drafting when you're at the last or the first pick because you just have to either get your guys, you have to like reach really far to get your guys, or you have to try to let them wait until they fall to you, and that usually doesn't happen. So uh, that's why I went one through four. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite spots are for this year. If you have not yet checked out my draft guide, I have literally an 8,000-word essay in there that I call the BDGD, BDGE Bible. 8,000 words going position by position, breaking it down, what your draft strategy should be for the 2018 season. Um, so that's all in there, as well as my top busts, my top sleepers, my rankings, 250 overall, positional rankings by tiers, my must draft players. All this shit is all broken down, bringing big facts only into your life. It's the only thing you need for your fantasy draft. So make sure you go cop the draft guide on sale right now on the website, link down below. Make sure you go follow me on the social medias, which have been up here the entire time, I hope, um, as well as their link down below. So. Uh, that's really it, so make sure you hit this thumbs up button down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. Tomorrow's video will be my wide receiver rankings broken down by tier. So I'll see you all then, and goodbye.